this project, I'll be going over the distillation process of pulling oil from roses to hopefully match their smell. I looked through forms and papers and found that the best way of doing this will be to distill petals, collect the hydrosol, and filter the remaining water oil and leaf mixture, then distill them separately before adding them back together. The reason behind this is that the lighter smells of the rose will be distilled off into the hydrosol and then the deeper smells will be left with the oil, water, and leaf mixture. So when we distill them separately and add them together at the end, we should have a full profile of rose oil. Something interesting to note though is roses produce much less oils than other plants, so a larger amount of them is used. I think the actual ratio is like 5,000 kilograms to one liter of pure oil, but I might be wrong. Luckily, my neighbor grows roses, so she let me some for this video. We picked all the petals from the roses and added them to the boiling flask, followed by just enough water to cover the petals. We then set up our still and filled the condenser with cold water, followed by turning on the heating mantle. Unfortunately, I didn't get much on camera. However, my roses were being pushed up into the neck of the flask, which caused an overflow, which made me stop the distillation, remove the stuck flowers from the neck before proceeding. This have, could have gone really bad, though luckily I was able to catch it in time. However, I will have to add additional filtering steps in the next process. We can now see that the heat has pulled almost all of the color from the roses and most of their internal oils. Once the distillation was complete, we had a deep red mixture in our receiving flask that didn't have too much smell now, though as it cooled I started to smell a light floral smell. It's at this point I will filter my mixture once to remove any of the petals that overflowed. I have a perfect filter for this, which is really just a travel coffee cup with a filter that works for large particles. We will continue to filter off the liquid from the receiving flask and then dump the remaining oils through a second filter to really clear them up though. Then, we will follow the same steps for the remaining oil, water, and plant material that was in our boiling flask at the beginning. We can see how murky and cloudy everything currently looks, however filtering it gave it a nice blood red color with some deeper floral smells. You can see the petals in the container to the left and then the rest of the oil and water I will dump into the flask, followed by sealing it and coming back tomorrow. The next day, I decided to distill the deeper smells first since there was a larger amount of water that I would have to remove from it. This portion of the process took about two and a half hours. We will pour the starting mixture of about 325 milliliters into the starting flask, fill the condenser, and turn on the heating mantle. After a while, we see the rose water be separated and it is crystal clear. I then wrap the boiling flask in tin foil and turn down the heat so I do not damage the rose oils and possibly lose smells. When I feel the distillation is complete, we have about 225 milliliters in the receiving flask of rose water, which would leave about 100 milliliters in the boiling flask. We pour the rose water into the labeled container and seal it for future use. I then dump the boiling flask into smaller jars before running it through coffee filter to remove any smaller particles still remaining, which is then poured back into clean vials. We then cleaned our still and will now boil what was in the first distillation's receiving flask. It should contain less water than the other solution, so it should be pretty quick to boil. We will turn on the water for the condenser, followed by the heating mantle at a medium heat. I will then wrap it in foil and let it run for about 45 minutes so I do not harm the oil with a higher heat. Once I feel the distillation is complete, the oil in the boiling flask looks murky, 
and as expected left some residue on my glassware that I'll have to clean later on. We can see we started with about two jars and now only have half, about half a jar left. This row solution will then be filtered just like the other two were. And then the distilled rose water was poured back into my container for future use, most likely for a rose tea. We can see the few stages of what we did here. First we have the flowers on the right, followed by the distilled rose solution, then the redistilled second stage, and the redistilled third stage, which we just saw. I noticed slightly different smells from each of these solutions, and one is considerably deeper than the other. Though when I mixed it with a 2 or 3 to 1 ratio, it does give it more of a rose smell. The turbine that was mainly pulled off was geraniol, which is pretty cool because it's so closely related to the precursors of CBGA, which is geraniol pyrophosphate or diphosphate. In our next video, I plan to make something like bath melts or use this oil for something cool, but until next time, have a great rest of your day.